Hello everyone, welcome back to Psychology in 5 Minutes. This video will be all about the evolution of psychology, so uh, where it started in uh, experimental psychology, and then moving on to behaviourism in the early 20th century, and then from the 1950s onwards, we'll be focusing on what is now known as cognitive psychology, which still happens to dominate the field of psychology to this very day, so let's get into it. So our first topic will be early experimental psychology. Now this ranged from the, roughly the 1870s to the 1910s. Um, we have a few familiar characters here, uh, Wilhelm Wund and Edward Titchener, uh, teacher and student at a university in Germany. And they were the first experimental psychologists. Uh, they launched a new enterprise which uh, wanted to focus on conscious thoughts and we have another similar or sorry familiar concept here in introspection which is just to clarify just it is basically looking within one's own mind to record the content of, of our own thoughts and mental processes um, so Wund and Titchener would make people do this and, and record everything that happened in their conscious minds and and meticulously trained these people so that it could be as objective as possible. And, and this uh, method of research was heavily influential for many years, but it gradually became quite flawed, or it became obvious that it was quite flawed because unconscious processes also had a huge role to play in behavior, and that is known now more than any time in history. Um, and introspection could not address this as you can't really think about your unconscious thoughts or else they would be conscious. Um, and with introspection, uh, the testability of claims was basically impossible. So for example, if one person said, I have a massive headache and another person said, well, my headache's worse, there is absolutely no way to test these claims. There's no way to compare mental states, even if it was quite objective, there's no way, way to compare people and their mental processes. Ultimately, this, Ned, uh, this led on to our next topic, which is behaviorism. So this led into behaviorism, which was the study of, as you can imagine, behavior. So behavior was seen as something that was objective. You could watch it and describe it with clear and precise language, and therefore it was seemingly more objective than um, introspection. Now, behaviorism dominated for the first half of the 20th century, and it approached behavior in a way that suggested that people would respond situ to situations based on the rewards and punishments. This was one of the key ideas, and this um, involved a concept called classical conditioning, which I will uh, delve into in later videos, but for now we'll move on. And it, it, it basically, behaviorism proposed that uh, people responded to the situations um, and behaved in a way because of the situation. But these theories became quite obsolete after a while because it was found that um, due to unconscious mental processes, that rather than people re responding to the um, responding to the situation they were in, rather they were interpreting the situation and then behaving because of their own interpretations of the situation, if that makes sense. Um, which then led to psychology delving into a more advanced field, um, which sought to delve into the unconscious processes behind behavior. So now we're moving on to the beginning of cognitive psychology, which began in the 1950s and still dominates the field to this very day. Um, and it began with the introduction of Kant's transcendental method, uh, which is basically a method where you make a hypothesis and then find the evidence to support or disprove this hypothesis. Uh, so basically, instead of trying to, um, I guess, uncover uh, unconscious mental processes directly, which was quite impossible at the time, you could in instead uh, study them indirectly and infer theories and ideas and then work backwards from there and try to find the evidence to support those theories and ideas. So this was very important and that certainly solidified psychology as a science at the time. 
Um, and it was obvious that uh, psychological phenomena were present, ever present, uh, and very impactful, but it was very hard to um, figure this stuff out. But the first or one of the first studies was Edward Tolman's rat study in 1948. Now, what this study achieved um, it basically showed that rats could map out a maze after being in, an in uh, being in a maze for 10 days with no direction. And then after the 10th day, food was placed and they knew exactly how to get there based on their learning of the maze. Now, this seems quite insignificant, but the point is that the rats used uh, mental processes or invisible mental processes to map out the maze and then f form what they called cognitive maps. And this explained their behavior and how they knew how to get to the food right away. Now, this was a very influential study, but there were also uh, huge influences from Europe. Um, most importantly, probably the Gestalt psychology movement, um, which was based in Berlin in Germany. And they argued that uh, behaviours and ideas and perceptions uh, can't be understood part by part, but rather they have to be understood as a whole. And they also uh, were very big advocates for the idea that people shaped the world around them by their perceptions. And this is an idea that has stood the test of time and it still has a huge impact on psychology and the theories that surround it. And also, um, Frederick Bartlett, uh, not a Gestalt psychologist, but he was a, a British psychologist that um, uncovered the idea of mental schemas, um, which are frameworks that, say, prepare us for our daily lives, interactions, um, and situations that we may come across and, and prepare us for these. Uh, however, I'll, I'm not going to go into too much detail with them right now, but I will go into a lot of detail with them in later videos, hopefully. It's very interesting. Um, also, just briefly, uh, towards um, the end of the 20th century, computer science had taken great steps and this heavily influenced psychology as it was found that, or it was coming to be, that the brain had similar processes to computers in, in regards to memory, in regards to storing information, and therefore this had a huge impact on how psychologists described the brain and its many, many processes and complex processes. But it gave psychologists a very good way of um, categorizing study and research and also gave psychologists pretty much just a, a more simple way to talk about um, psychological, psychological phenomena. Thank you for watching everyone. Sorry that went for a bit longer than it should have. Um, hopefully that all made sense. I tried to fit a lot of information in there. Um, now that we've got the two, if I'll be honest, quite boring um, topics out of the way, we can get into some of the cool stuff. So next video will be the anatomy of the brain, which will be quite interesting. And then from there on, we've got a few interesting topics coming up. So stay tuned. Um, any criticisms, leave them in the comments. If I got, got anything wrong, let me know. Um, yep, thank you for watching. See you next video.